Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. Earlier this week, I showed you my setup for doing some basic cutting and engraving in sterling silver. With those fundamentals in our back pocket, let's try machining something a little more complex than a round disc charm. How about a word necklace? And let's make this from scratch in Carbide Create. I already have a word and font in mind, but if you don't have something with naturally overlapping letters, you'll probably want to find, buy, or make your own text in a continuous vector. If you're going the DIY route, it might be easiest to create your word art in a dedicated vector graphics editor like Illustrator or Inkscape. Within Carbide Create, there are some tricks we can use to clean up the text that we have here. For example, there are some gaps in this text, and although an applied contour toolpath will be smart enough to avoid going between letters where there's not enough room for an end mill to fit, it would still be better if we could just fuse the text together. I'm going to combine the letters into an optimized vector. We can do this by selecting our text and creating a boundary offset from the outside. I'm going to push the boundary outward until the offset vectors from each individual letter are touching, and then immediately after that I'll offset the vector back in. This can bridge letters that are next to each other because once those vector bubbles touch and merge, they really don't want to unmerge, so I'm using that to my advantage. This will give a better representation of how our word necklace will look once it's done being machined. It also gives us the added benefit of being able to pick and choose individual contours within the text, so we can tell Carbide Create to machine certain areas first, like the inside of the letters. I'm also going to draw two pairs of concentric circles and place them sort of like Mickey Mouse ears to form the anchor points for a chain. You can use a boolean operation to combine the outer profile of your text with your loops if you so choose. I'm opting to do this in such a way that I can basically erase some of the little lead-ins or flourishes of my font. Now, if your letters are big enough, you could totally machine this with a 1 32nd inch end mill to contour cut everything like we did before. But there are some really skinny internal features here that I want to use a 0.02 inch end mill for because I think having that ultra fine level of detail will make the finish piece way better. Since this is an even more fragile tool than a 1 32nd inch cutter, we're going to have to go even slower than before. 10,000 RPM, 6 inches per minute, 3 thou depth of cut. Again, if you have any doubts at all about the flatness of your stock, start your cut an extra step or two above your material so that you're not caught off guard if there's a local high spot. I will admit that I did break an end mill during my silver testing because I didn't take that precaution. You could also use this smaller end mill to contour outside your part, but for the sake of time, I'm going to switch back to a 1 32nd inch end mill. Using the speeds and feeds from our previous video, we know we can push 33% more aggressive in both feed rate and depth of cut. Since there are some areas where the 1 32nd inch end mill couldn't fit, I'm going to draw two little splines in between the legs of the R to be traced with our 501 PCB engraver. I'm eyeballing an offset of about 2 to 3 thou to account for the radius of the engraver. Scoring this little area is a really quick operation, but it breaks up the shiny face of the silver and adds just enough contrast to help improve legibility. And while we're doing projects that are mostly 2D contours, let's also try cutting out this Nautilus shell vector. If you look online, you can easily find dozens of SVGs that look almost exactly like this. Again, adding in two little circles and doing some Boolean addition and subtraction will allow me to fuse an extra hole into my shell for attaching this to a chain. Contour toolpath the inside first, and then cut out the outside. The diameter of your end mill will determine how many of the little cutouts inside the shell you can make. The great thing about using fixed ring wax is that it doesn't clog your cutters and your parts will release easily with a bit of applied heat. You don't have to worry about forcing or prying your delicate pieces off the table like you would with adhesive work holding. However, you will have to do a little cleanup. I usually do a little scraping with the edge of a blade and that gets most of the wax off my parts. The walls of your cut may need a little more TLC because even if the wax isn't melted on, flakes of it as well as chips can stick to the walls or get packed into tight corners. Cleaning options range from ultrasonic cleaning, chemical solvents, or just good old fashioned manual labor. Once you have your piece cleaned off, you can polish it up using whatever your preferred method is. I lack fancy finishing or polishing tools, so I'm stuck doing it by hand using some polishing cloths. For doing just a couple small parts though, this works just fine. Polishing or buffing this part will gently radius the edges, making the pieces feel smoother in hand or against skin, and it'll scatter light just a little differently. It's a subtle effect you just can't capture in a simulation or a render. Anyhow, that's how I would tackle some basic jewelry pieces in sterling silver, starting from 2D CAD. There are many techniques you can use to achieve the same result. Complex geometries may be better off carved in wax and then cast, but should you ever want or need to go directly from a design to metal, the option of subtractive manufacturing is open to you. Hope you picked up some project ideas from this video. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.